today we're going to talk about the golden rule. Yeah, so the golden rule, this is uh, one of the more important design ideas that we can talk about. So um, I brought you here for as an example. This is my syllabus, the syllabus for the course I taught here at Harvard last year on global justice. Now, you can see we've discussed immigration and climate change and international organization and um, a host of a, a lot of issues. But for each one of these classes, what we have is reading, and then class discussion, reading, and then class discussion, reading, and then class discussion. Oh, this provided the students with a really great opportunity to think about the ways the moral theories we read intersect with these issues. But if we want to train our students to think, to, to practice decision making that are similar to the kind of decisions they'll have to make after they graduate, so think about the decisions that are made about trade are made in contexts very different from the decisions that are made about immigration. Trade is more technical and complicated. Immigration is very emotional. So how do we do that? All right, so the golden rule is you want to match the theme with the mechanic. You want to match the story with the rules of the game or the instructions of the assignment. So what do I mean by that? Um, let's look at a couple of board games and see how they do it. So when you say matching the theme with the mechanics, you mean that there's a, the theme is something to do with the story and the purpose of what a player is trying to accomplish, and then the mechanics are the moves they can make. That's right. The mechanics are, are the rules of the game, the instructions. They're the diff different components that kind of set up what a player can and can't do. And the theme is the story, the narrative, the... Uh, the substance, the content, the identity of the players, the description of their actions, the meaning of uh, mm -hmm. what's going on in the game. How is that different between Agricola and Lancaster? Right. And some of how the theme matches the mechanics? Right. So what's, what's interesting here is that Lancaster has a very similar core mechanic, the same kind of what's called the worker placement mechanic, where you, you, have, you have your little wooden pieces. In this case, they are wooden knights and you send them to locations, and once you do, you occupy that place such that nobody else can come. Except that in, in Lancaster, there's an exception where if you, pull, you put on your red knight somewhere, I can bump you out of the knight if and only if I have a bigger knight. So you have your number one, and I have my number two, so my number two can kick out your number one. Um, that story would not make sense in the market because that would just mean I punched you and took all your groceries and we wouldn't call that a game about farmers, it would be a game about thieves. In the context of the War of the Roses in England, it makes a lot more sense because if I have a knight in my faction that is bigger and stronger and he took over the castle that was occupied by a previous knight, that mm -hmm. makes a lot more sense. So the story changes mm -hmm. and that reinforces the change in the rules. It makes a lot mm. more sense to us that there's this ex exception to mm. the worker placement core mechanics. Right, okay. So different stories or different themes allow for different moves, different That's right. mechanics. Yeah, and as we said, you know, in the game, sometimes they start with the mechanics, sometimes they start with mm. uh, the story. In teaching, we're mostly interested in the substance. So we're really interested in the content that we want to deliver. But we should be thinking a lot also about the way we deliver it and maybe think a little bit outside the box and do things other than discuss X. So could you explain uh, your experience with the whistleblowing simulation that you've done in those terms, again, of the, the, the right. theme and the mechanics? So the, the story we wanted to explore, the, the kind of ethical conundrum, the question we wanted to in, uh, interrogate was, should you leak documents that expose corruption if they're going to harm your preferred candidate, in fact, your employer, the candidate that you've been working for? And so that's a, that's a complicated, that's a difficult moral question. So people have struggled with it in theory and in the real life. However, this is the kind of decision, unlike a lot of other decisions, that in, when they occur in real life, people struggle with them on their own. They don't get their peers like in the classroom to discuss and have a back and forth and see what's popular and what's the majority opinion. And so the way we designed the simulation, we had small groups working, each of them running a campaign 
for their candidates and they were working through, through uh, uh, the whole activity. And then at the very last scenario, one random student in each group got this secret, special secret scenario where it says, you've just learned that your candidate has been involved in corruption and you got, you got hold of these documents and you need to decide on your own whether to leak them. So the students were in a situation that's very similar to the situation of the real whistleblower, of course, not as stressful. Not as grave. <laughs> not as grave. Well, we don't, we don't want them to put them in grave situation in the classroom. We just right. want to give them a taste of what it would feel like. But they had to betray their peers. They had to betray the work that they have been doing throughout the entire exercise. And they had to make this decision without telling their peers while pretending to still be a part of the conversation. The first meeting point of the students with the material was not just about reading a mm. hypothetical scenario, it was mm. being in a situation where they had to keep it a secret mm. from their friends for a short period of time mm. while they're making this decision. Right, so it really ev evokes emotion in, in a different way and decision making, right, as something um, we've talked about is important in teaching ethics. That's that right. Simulation of decision making in that context. It evokes emotion and it forces students to practice exercise, exercising judgment. So they have to exercise this judgment. They have to confront it themselves as as if they are making the decision and not hypothetically think about other people. And the last point I'll say is a pro tip from board games to teaching is that if you can match not just the theme with the mechanics but also the components. So you know, you notice that the knights that are that are stronger are not don't just have a number that's higher, but they're also bigger and thicker. Mm -hmm. So if you, can, you provide students with props and background decoration for the classroom, that will even further enhance the experience. Well, thanks for talking to us about the golden rule, and next time we'll be talking about the magic circle. The magic circle. Right.